that AC is blowing out about 36. If I turn it all the way down, it'll literally get down to like 18. I've got the switch that makes it cycle about halfway, and I'm at an idle. So you can see it's going to pull down now. Because the compressor's on. That's some ice cold AC right there. I'll let it pull down until it cycles. It should cycle. I may have to kick that switch up a little bit because that's pretty cold AC. Matter of fact, I think I will kick it up just a little bit. Or kick it down, I mean. There we go, I just turned it off. Alright, so on the old Jeep, these old systems, th these switches are backwards, I have to change them. Whoever did this did them wrong. But anyways, this is the fan, as you can see. And this uh, controls... I guess there's like a, uh, oh, what the heck's it called? An expansion valve or something in there. Yeah, there's got to be an expansion valve in it because it has a, uh, it has a uh, filter dryer. It doesn't have an accumulator. So, yeah. But anyway, that's probably the adjustable expansion valve there. And that there's your fan. But, man, we got some cold AC. So, I'm going to go ahead and drive it around. So, I just got done charging this. I'll tell you about that process in a minute, what I did. But when I got it, you know, the AC, it might blow out, um, I don't know. I might have got like about 62 or 65 out of it on the highway. And that was on like, a, it got warm here a couple weekends ago probably got up to like I don't know might have got up to like 68 or 70 probably about 70 one day and that that just wasn't cutting it I think I've had AC this cold since I had my old 1988 Ford Thunderbird Turbo Coupe. That was an R12 car, and my gosh, was it freezing. It would freeze your ears so bad it would hurt. This here was R12, not anymore. I'll show you what I did to it. All right, now that you see everything works, uh, I'm going to go ahead and pause it, pull it up, and I'll be right back. All righty, so I'm back with you. Of course, the engine's running. AC compressor's turning, clutch is engaged. There, it just turned off. And that's because it's cycling there. I'll let you see it turn back on here. And here's the filter dryer. Your accumulator won't have a glass sight. Your filter dryer does. The accumulator's on the low side. The filter dryer's on the high side so anyways we're cycling you shouldn't see very many bubbles if you have a properly charged system there's some in there actually no there's not that's pretty much clear isn't it yeah it is yeah we got her good okay 
So anyways, I was saying, if you have an accumulator, it's going to look pretty much like this, but you're not going to have a sight on it. And it's going to be on the low side of the system. A filter dryer usually will have a sight. It'll be on the high side. The high side's a small line. The low side's a large line. So here's your low side. Here's your high side. This is your suction side. This is where you charge it on the low side. You never want to charge it on the high side. Except when you, uh, when you evacuate the system, when you, when you pull a vacuum, you hook it up to both sides and pull them on both. All right, so I did go ahead and use my uh, vacuum pump on it. I did pull a vacuum on it. And I had my old set of uh, R22 gauges there I used. I had to make a couple fittings. Um, I've got some old stuff laying around from back in the day and some O-rings and stuff. But uh, I was able to make um, an adapter to go on there. Um, but here's the key to it right here. Right here. Remember these things? I don't know if you can buy these anymore or not. I haven't looked. But I've heard they're awful hard to come by these days. All this is a can tap. Caps the tan. Taps the can on the side. And um, they do come with an adapter. So you can also tap a little, a little oil charge can. Just pierces it right there, has an o-ring, clamps in place. That's right folks. That's what I'm using. The electronic, the electronics duster. Compressed air. Well, I ain't the first one to figure this out. People have been doing this for years and years. There's what it contains right there. It contains that refrigerant which is very similar in characteristics to R12. There's the cast number right there. This is bona fide refrigerant. I forgot the number, the number it's, it's called, but uh, look that up. It's actually refrigerant. Um, as of right now, February 2020, you can buy a four pack of these, 10 ounces each at Walmart for $14. So if you have an old R12 vehicle, I suggest you stock up on these. See what I did. So you get a four pack of them for uh, 14 bucks. I actually, I pierced three cans, but that's my fault. I only used one can to get the system this cold. I wasn't gonna show all that on film because these gauges are old. I had two good sets of gauges. I guess someone came in here and grabbed them one day because I can't find them. I don't know. Someone must have heisted them. But anyway, I did pull a proper vacuum on it. And, uh, I mean, there's the results right there. And I'm not pulling one. There's the result right there. And believe me, if I turn that down, that thing will get down to lower than 18 degrees. If I turned it up, I probably need to turn it up a little more. That's probably a little too cold. So I can adjust this right here. And there, turn it down a little bit more. But there you go. That's how you get some ice cold AC. Don't be afraid of it. Okay. Like you see, I used a vacuum pump and some, you know, manifold gauge set. If you don't have that and you don't want to spend the money on it, it's an old vehicle, right? If it's an R12 vehicle, you got a real nice vehicle, don't do it. But if you got something like I got and you just want some AC and, you know, um, well, you're going to have to get a can tap first. Try to track one of these down. Um, I, I've had this one probably for 20 years and this one here I bought at the same time probably probably 20 years ago and I never opened it I bought an extra one and now I'm glad I did so see if you can't find one of those maybe eBay or maybe Napa Auto Parts something like that I'm really not sure um, this was a master cool one there you go it's just this one here is called a 3-in-1 can tap but you know some of them 
see this one does 134 12 and oil charges so there's a part number there um, just Google you know AC can tap or whatever and then all you need is you need the hose that goes with it um, I, I used my I, I want a different route with the manifold set and everything but you can just get yourself a hose this isn't the right one this is for a, a one uh, no yeah yeah this is for an old 12 can but uh, you know because you can't use this this tap on those cans because it doesn't have it you know you gotta you gotta tap the side anyways get yourself a can tap find yourself a hose that'll go from the can tap here this does both R12 and 134 style and just get it that it fits on your vehicle um, if you can't find one that has the R12 fitting or the R22 fitting same thing um, just uh, maybe, maybe you can find one of these I'm not sure this here has a 134 quick release fitting and um, this will fit on here because this will do 134 or 12 and then you can just find yourself an adapter like this just screw it right on your um, R R12 low side on your car and then you can just pop it right on there and use it there's a bunch of different ways to do it but anyways this way worked for me and it's no no life folks I wouldn't have these cans around all all popped if I didn't use them and of course it contains a bitter in you know if you guys want to inhale this stuff and get high so all right thanks for watching man kick ass AC right here and I've heard you can even use this as a replacement in a 134 system uh, it's a lower head pressure like R12 so it should be even colder in a 134 system although I'm not gonna do it on my vehicles because 134 is cheap enough and I got a 30 gallon jug of it Anyways, take care. Bye.